Sisters in the middle. Sisters in the middle. Yeah. Oh yes, we have a sister. Salam alaikum, sister. Salam alaikum. It's an honor to be talking to you right now, sir. My name is Sindhus and I'm currently a student and uh, I study with lots of non-Muslims and uh, I'm faced many times with the question, if there's a God, why are there bad things in this world? I love that question. <laughs> I love that question. You know why I love that question? Because I used to have the same question. And anything and everything I looked at never answered that question until I came to Islam. That for me is one of the clearest proofs. If you really want to use your brain and think about what's going on around you and think about religion and a belief pattern or system, really you need to look at Islam. You really need to look at it because it's the only one that gives you the answer. Because Islam never demands from you blind faith. Never. The only thing we are told in Islam, the only restriction don't try to imagine what Allah is like. Don't imagine what Allah looks like. Don't get into that area because you can't. You'll, dis dis you'll destroy your own brain. Other than that, ask. And on our website, watch out, here comes a commercial. On our website, islamnewsroom.com, we have that article featured more times maybe than almost anything else. If there's a God, why all of this chaos in the world? And that's our subject today, isn't it? All this chaos in the world. Tornadoes. Earthquakes. We have an earthquake page on that same website. All about earthquakes. It updates every few minutes. You can see where the earthquakes are right now. And they have increased in intensity, just like Prophet Muhammad said they would. Tremendous number of earthquakes today. Several hundred earthquakes have happened since I've been giving you this speech right now. Go there and check it out. Along with that, pestilence, violence, wars, occupations, and I'm not talking about jobs. <laughs> and family abuse, serious problems. We even talked about a few of them, didn't we? Serious stuff. So if there's a gun, why is all that stuff happening? It means the person asking the question doesn't even have the basic understanding of what Islam taught. Islam never taught us that this was the Jannah. Huh? What? You thought you were in paradise? Is that what you thought? Look what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said. He summed it up with one of the simplest, most beautiful little teachings you could ever imagine. When it comes to why do bad things happen to good people, that's how I titled the, the lecture about this originally years ago. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Adunya Sijnu Mu'min Wa Jannatul Kafir. This material existence that we're in called Hayat to dunya, life of this world, is a prison to a true believer. But it's the only paradise to a disbeliever. He narrowed it down to two things, believers and disbelievers. We know as believers that this is the hardest thing we're going to go through. Because when this is over, that's it. It's done. It's done. You're not going to be put in any more tests. But you start seeing the results of the tests. You know how that goes. But for the disbeliever, this is their paradise. And that's why they want so desperately to build the big things here. The fancy cars, the beautiful homes, the best of clothes. You know what I'm saying? You know, stretch your stuff, baby. Okay. This is what they're looking for. But our Prophet Sallallahu told us, and this is another hadith, to clarify it even more. Because some of the companions were concerned about the same thing that you're concerned about with your question. He said two people would be brought 
on the day of judgment. One of them, he had everything he asked for in this life. Even to the extent when he was dying, he wanted a feast set before him and he got it. The other person, he didn't get anything he asked for. Even to the extent when he was about to die, all he asked for was just a drink of water. And he didn't even get that. Now on the day of judgment, the one who had everything, he would be pushed into the hell fire. Like you put a needle in something and pull it out. Just in that instant. Whoop, whoop. And then, it's not in the Hadith. That, whoop, whoop, it's not there. <laughs> Don't look for that. He would be asked, in your whole life, remember you had everything. In your whole life, did you ever see any good? He'd say, well, Lord, in my whole life, I never saw anything good. It wiped it all out. The other man that had nothing, suffered in this life, would be put into paradise. <laughs> like you put a pin in something and pull it out. And then he would be asked, in your whole life, did you ever see anything bad? He would say, well, what? In my whole life, I never saw anything bad. No hardships. So the companions, still not quite satisfied with that one, they said, yeah, but, okay, so why this guy who had everything has to go to hell, and why the other guy goes to paradise? Oh. And Prophet Sassam made it real clear. Nobody's perfect. Well, <laughs> Yeah, duh. I'm one of those not perfect guys. He said that nobody is perfectly good and nobody's perfectly bad. The man who had everything in this life, actually he was a very bad person. Allah hated him. So we don't have that concept, by the way. God is love and he loves everything and everybody no matter how bad they are. No, 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 no. We know that God is the loving al-wadud and ready to love anything and everything that is good, but he's also capable of washadid al-iqab, dealing it out heavy duty, and you don't want to know about that. So this man who Allah hated, who had done so many monstrously bad things to people, yet he did some good deeds. So Allah paid him in this life for his good deeds. So he would not even smell the paradise. That he could be thrown directly, right straight into hell. The other man, this gentleman, actually was very good. And Allah loved him. But he did some bad things. He made some mistakes. But because Allah doesn't want him to even smell the hellfire, not even for a nanosecond, so Allah let him have his punishment here in this dunya so that he could go straight into the paradise. Stop and think about it. Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't there really need to be a, a day of judgment? Because otherwise, how could any of us look at the things that are going on around us again and again and again and see how the tyrants and the aggressors and the oppressors throughout history again and again and again. Not only do they win these battles and wars, but they go away with all the spoils of wars. Well, the really good people, the honest, kind, giving, generous, charity giving people are suffering. Literally starving to death. But that's because this is a dunya. How many of you know what the word dunya really means? Raise your hand. You really know where it comes from? What's the source? Ah, something really low. Really low in a base. Something so disgusting, right? Somebody would go, oh man, that dunya on my shoe.